County. And it's good to start these conversations and these uh, forums up again, uh, just by way of background for um, some new joiners. We took about a two month hiatus, Pat, Pat sitting right beside me here, um, with regards to these calls. We were really doing these in the heat of COVID, the heat of isolation, and uh, really just getting the community together, the business community, um, the leaders, the residents of Wheatland County and area to have conversations about best practices, what everyone was up to. Uh, and we thought it would be an appropriate time to start these calls up again, just to see how everyone's doing and talk about um, some of the shared experiences and listen to some experts, uh, subject matter experts on any advice and guidance that uh, they may have for the small business community, um, which is really the theme that we uh, center the Infinite WC calls around is business collaboration and gaining that insight from our from our support partners from all levels of government. Um, so again, welcome back. Uh, we have included a, an agenda today um, that was circulated in the Outlook uh, calendar invite. So what we're gonna do is really um, go through just a quick welcome. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Reeve Link, who is in on the call as well, um, before we get into the meat and potatoes of uh, the, the gathering today. So we are on recording for this conversation, just to let everyone know. Uh, we'll upload the conversation to the WC YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to visit www.infinitewc.ca and you'll find all of our social links in the footer of our site. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to Reeve Link uh, for some welcoming remarks. So Amber, take it away. Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of Wheatland County Council, I'm delighted to welcome you all to our call. I think it's fantastic as we settle into the rhythms of autumn and everybody gets back to their routines that we can gather on this platform again. I'm extremely excited for today's presentation and as well for the collaboration uh, that these calls always result in. So thank you and welcome. Thank you, Reeve Link. And I just want to also acknowledge, I think Councillor Donna Bigger has joined our call from far away Vancouver Island, Donna. Are you here? Yes, I am. Do you want to say any remarks as well? Um, yes, I um, <laughs> would like to actually thank you and Patrick for bringing these um, uh, conversations together again. And um, I know we we've got we got a lot done in the spring through them and lots of information. So, and I appreciate especially today with uh, our guest speaker. And um, yeah, welcome back. And it stopped raining here finally, so yeah, I'm having a good day. Awesome, good to hear. Look forward to seeing you uh, return when your when your travels are uh, finished. But I'm glad to hear you're having a good time. Um, just before we get uh, started with the presentations, um, just from the county's perspective, um, we know and recognize that 2020 has been a challenging year for businesses, for individuals, families. Uh, most of it uh, due to our year over year oil and gas downturn, but of course we had COVID-19 hit uh, and it hit all layers of government, it hit NGOs. Um, and those organizations have been doing a lot of work uh, looking at a lot of different ways to mitigate, especially throughout the year. And so there's been a lot of creativity in government and, and we're, um, we're really happy that at Wheatland County, we undertook this uh, initiative to pull everyone together to talk about the challenges and just kind of have that World Cafe uh, environment. So uh, that was really uh, something that we really prioritized through our economic development strategy. Uh, this year, the global lockdown, which began in March, immediately impacted the previous um, growing sector of tourism. That was a priority in Alberta. Many different provinces prioritized tourism and certainly here in Alberta, that was a priority and the impact was astronomical. Um, the world sought to travel more. The world, the borders were um, breaking down. Uh, there were political borders, but people were traveling more and the access to travel was, um, was there. Um, people started making money and prioritizing travel and those experiences. And as economies have improved in the developing world, the travel market, it grew even more. It was the one economic sector you could bank on for steady growth. In March, tourism in most of its forms had its rug pulled out worldwide without exception and Alberta, as mentioned, 
was not an exception. Across the industry, it has to adapt, restructure, and look at the tourists that it could welcome. The experiences each business had to offer has had to conform or rethink around phased reopenings guided by health officials and more of the local visitor. There have been casualties across the sector and some stories of hope and innovation. Our provincial crown corporation, Travel Alberta, has been working with the tourism sector and adapting and strategizing on where the industry can go. We are privileged to have with us today Chris Hazeltine, Acting Chief Executive Officer, and Karen Soika, Vice President of Tourism Strategy with Travel Alberta. They're here to talk about tourism, where it is and where it can go. Just brief bios on both. For Chris Hazeltine, Acting Chief Executive Officer, he has over 25 years of international business development experience within both the public and private sectors. Previously, as Vice President of Economic Development and Community Engagement, Chris provided advice and guidance to travel Alberta and tourism industry stakeholders on the development and delivery, delivery of tourism programs and services in support of economic development and community development. Chris joined the government Alberta in 1998 as Executive Director of Investment Attraction for Economic Development and Tourism. In 2003, he was appointed Managing Director of the Alberta UK office and took on the responsibility of opening and managing Alberta's international offices in London. In 2014, Chris joined Alberta Tourism, Parks and Recreation as the Assistant Deputy Minister for Tourism and in 2020 moved over to Travel Alberta. Chris has a degree in economics from Acadia University and has served on numerous boards and advisory committees, including University of Calgary International Business Advisory Committee, Calgary Chamber of Commerce Interna International Business Committee, Hong Kong Canada Business Association, and the Canadian Council for the Americas. Chris and his family enjoy skiing, hiking, paddling, cycling, and getting lost in the mountains. And briefly for Karen, as Vice President, Tourism and Strategy, Karen leads Travel Alberta's tourism and strategy team, which is accountable for ensuring provincial and national tourism alignment and research and data insights strategy that will inform strategic direction and oversee the delivery of the 2020 to 2022 Alberta rebound strategy. Prior to this, Karen led Travel Alberta's business development team, including Travel Trade and MICE MICE, which is Travel Trade and Meetings Incentive Conventions and Events, within Canada and six international markets. Karen has been within the Travel Alberta team since 2007 in previous roles responsible for consumer marketing, travel trade and media within North America, Asia and Latin America. She has spent the majority of her career as part of the Alberta tourism industry, working in marketing, sales and resort operations. And with that, I'll turn it over to Chris and Karen for their presentation. Welcome you guys and thank you for uh, being here. Thanks very much, Matthew. Really appreciate it. And, and, and thanks to Patrick for inviting us. Um, as you'll see, hopefully on your screens, Karen has just flipped up a, uh, a PowerPoint that she's going to share with, with you and we're going to walk through. So uh, Matthew's comments were bang on. Um, so much has changed in, in sort of, well, I guess in four months, uh, five months. But, uh, you know, if you look back a year ago, tourism in this province was booming. Uh, we were uh, growing consistently not just domestically, but internationally. You know, we were almost a $9 billion tourism industry. It put us up right up there in terms of uh, source of, of employment for the province of Alberta. We were number th uh, four or five in terms of overall employment. Uh, we were consistently ranked as you know, one of the pillars of the economy and talked about as a pillar of the economy. And the government that uh, came to power under the UCP uh, really identified tourism as a growth sector for the province and and um, and vitally important to the long-term diversification. So then COVID comes around and of course um, tourism was instantly and devastatingly hit or impacted. Uh, things ground to a halt and so much has changed. So what we wanted to do today, <clears throat> hopefully in the next 15 or 20 minutes and then with some Q&A, um, is give you a quick overview uh, of of the structure of, of Travel Alberta in terms of where we align within government, the strategy and plans that we're working on, and then also what's happening in the industry and where uh, the opportunities are coming from. And Karen's going to jump in and do a lot of that. So Karen, if we could go to the next slide, please. 
So just, just to recap, Travel Alberta is an agency or a crown corporation of the government of Alberta, and it was formed back in 2009, 2009. So we've just uh, last year celebrated a 10th anniversary and we're in our 11th year. We don't, what essentially that means is we are funded uh, by the government of Alberta and we, we, we report directly to, the, um, to Travel Alberta. We have a private sector board which reports to the uh, to the minister, and in this case, it's the Minister of Jobs, Economy, and Innovation. And really, um, maybe I'll just say a quick word about that. As you know, all know, we have bounced, tourism has bounced around over the years from culture and tourism. It's probably where I first met Patrick, and I've been working with Patrick in, in the Canadian Badlands. And I must throw a dig in there to Donna that she, uh, recognizing that she's out of her province. Hopefully, hopefully she left her credit card at home and is not spending any money, tourism dollars in her neighboring province. Um, but uh, we bounced around, as I said, and, and we are now in, in the Ministry of Jobs, Economy and Innovation. The fact that tourism is not uh, included in the ministry's name should not be a concern to anyone. We are being reassured that tourism will be a top priority moving forward and will be one of the um, government's top uh, sectors for diversification with a strategy around that. So. Where Travel Alberta fits in is we've been mandated traditionally with the promotional side of tourism. So that's really marketing the province and working with, with companies to promote themselves uh, both domestically and internationally. Um, industry is responsible for creating those experienced products and services. And the government, government of Alberta, through the Ministry of Jobs, Economy and Innovation, really takes the lead in setting that infrastructure and, and building the infrastructure and setting the overall environment in which tourism can grow and thrive. Maybe we'll just jump onto the next slide, please, Karen. So there's a bunch of things in play here. Um, and many of you may be aware of the Alberta 10-year tourism strategy and the goal of doubling tourism within 10 years by 2030. Um, about a year ago of this time, we were very active and busy working with our stakeholders to, to uh, participate in engagement and consultation to develop the 10-year tourism strategy. The 10-year tourism strategy, a draft version was presented to the minister at that time, ADTT, Tanya Fur, um, on January 30th. And we all know what happened after that, soon after uh, COVID set in and, and things essentially ground to a halt. The, the intent of this strategy though, was to set an overall environment uh, from a policy and regulatory perspective under which tourism can really thrive in this province. Um, moving down from there, um, Travel Alberta immediately um, set about building what we refer to as our Travel Alberta rebound strategy uh, in response to COVID. Um, and really it, it, it would happen at about the same time as our start of our fiscal year. So essentially what it did is it temporarily replaced our business plan. And it was sent to be a two year rebound strategy um, it had the, the, we created a goal to essentially restart Alberta's tourism industry and rebuild Alberta's visitor economy to 2019 levels by 2023. And there was, it was a three phased approach, or it is a three phased approach, uh, respond, restart and rebuild. And we're presently in the restart phase of that. Uh, for each of the three phases, there's five focus areas, response and alignments, destination development, destination promotion, destination management, and, and internal business continuity. And we're working through that right now uh, with our stakeholders. And, and I said, said uh, we're in the, um, the restart stage and hoping to, to be aggressively moving outward from there. What's happening at the moment though, is um, there is talk, uh, there's not even talk, there is direction from the government of Alberta to strengthen the overall mandate and commitment for tourism in the province of Alberta. And one of the things that is connected to that and, and is spoken to in the draft 10 year tourism strategy is the concept of shifting, uh, reprofiling re of Travel Alberta into a full destination management organization. And that would require shifting partial mandate from the tourism division or what was the tourism division within, a, within JEI over to Travel Alberta. And when we talk about a destination management organization, that really looks at not just the promotional and marketing side of uh, the equation, but the overall management side and uh, development side 
of tourism as well. So looking at development of new destinations, new attractions, conducting the research, um, statistics, evaluation, the policy work, investment attraction, all these areas. So you, what you'll likely see over the next little while is the shifting of mandate um, from the department over to Travel Alberta, some key areas, not everything will come, but uh, we're working on that right now with them. And, and hopefully by the start of the new fiscal year, you will see a new organization uh, with a DMO um, status, destination management organization status. And we will be working on a destination management plan. And that destination management plan, I think the key thing here is it's it, it takes what is set out in the overall 10-year tourism strategy from a regulatory and policy perspective and really identifies the opportunities and priorities moving forward. And something that Patrick and I have often talked about is, is the need for diversification, and that's going to be a key element of, of the DMP. And when we talk about diversification, it's not just diversification of destinations in the province. So we all know that uh, people from outside of the province love to flock here and really they're coming here to see the Rockies and, our, um, and visit our, our um, Rocky Mountain uh, resort communities and for that, and uh, as well as the Badlands and areas like that. But we also want to diversify uh, the seasonality side of it as well. And, um, and that's a challenge for destinations uh, and regions around the world, really. We all, it's, you know, summertime is the busy season. What we need to do is build out those shoulder seasons and that winter season really capitalize on the exposure that, that uh, the province gets and the brand gets. So that will be a key element of the DMO. Um, of the DMP, sorry. Maybe on to the next slide, Karen, please. And I think it's probably jumping over to you now. Great, thanks, Chris, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, Patrick and, and Matthew, if at any point we're getting a little long, please just let me know, and we're always happy to share the information with you after. Um, but we wanted to start with just a really quick look at what tourism looked like prior to COVID, and we thought this was a bit of an impactful slide. It really tells us uh, what traveler spending was like for Albertans, as well as international contribution to Alberta's visitor economy. So what you can see here very quickly is that Albertans have historically spent three times more traveling outside of the province uh, to other parts of, of, of Canada than what they spend right here at home. And prior to COVID, Albertans overall spending annually uh, reached about 2.6 billion. Uh, to other parts of Canada, and that was very similar to the spend of Albertans going to the United States. And what you see on the right of the screen is that we also know international visitation has contributed about 1.8 billion in expenditures to Alberta annually. So right now, of course, with borders closed and non-essential international travel not permitted, we've basically lost that new money that's coming into the province. And so in the early months of COVID, uh, this information had really helped us with our messaging to really try to encourage Albertans to go out and spend uh, time exploring the province when they felt safe to do so. And we really needed to encourage them to do overnight trips. We needed them to uh, think more than just day trips, go spend some time overnight. That was really going to help the accommodation sector. And, you know, to really also spend the money that they would normally spend in British Columbia or Saskatchewan and other parts of Canada to spend it right here at home. Um, and it has to go further than that too. As we're going forward, we want to continue to, to see and inspire Albertans to that money that they would normally spend traveling to other parts of the world, if they can spend it in their own backyard. Because really it's going to take about a third of international spending to uh, help us to mitigate that loss in international spending for the province. Uh, now, as I said, this was a lot of the information that we were using in the early part of, of COVID to really help really frame the, the impact on our tourism industry. But since then, we now have a, a lot more information that's available, and so that's what we wanted to share with you today. Um, know that there still are, however, a lot of unknowns, and we have to make a lot of assumptions based on the information that we were working with. But there is now a lot more data that's available to substantiate the, the findings that we're going to share with you. So just really quickly know that we started by commissioning a study with tourism ex economics to gain an understanding of the economic impact uh, of COVID on the province. And the study did look at economic conditions in the province prior to COVID. Um, as, as Matthew has had uh, referred to earlier, uh, obviously failing oil prices have already been impacting Alberta's economy prior to the pandemic. Uh, we, and we know that low prices, oil prices are going to continue to slow Alberta's economic recovery relative to the rest of Canada. Uh, and unemployment in Alberta is actually forecast to be two points higher than the national rate. 
and we, we should anticipate through all this is that we're going to continue to see a decline in Albertans disposable income for the remainder of this year and the early part of 2021. And so that study that we did with Tourism Economics, it was uh, built out on three different scenarios based on Canadian data and through the lens of Alberta's economy. And so what this slide assumes is that Canadians convert a fraction of their international leisure travel uh, to spending towards uh, domestic travel. So meaning they're spending that money uh, in Alberta. And based on this scenario, you can see that uh, if the forecast is, is expected to see a fall to 3.5 billion in, in revenues, that's a 65% drop compared to 2009. And based on this scenario, I know that uh, when Chris started, when we, when we built this rebound strategy at the start of the pandemic, we said, you know, how can we get back to 2019 levels by 2023? And that was really throwing a dart, you know, at the dartboard and going, can we get there by that point, given that we had no idea where this was going to, how this was going to play out. Uh, and what we now know is we've got a slow climb ahead of us. As you can see at the bottom here, or sorry, at the top, uh, the, the scenario is forecasting that the regional market will return to 2019 levels by 2022. We'll see the rest of Canada maybe by 2023, but the U.S. and international won't return to 2019 levels until 2024 or 2025. So it's now starting to tell a bit of a, a different story for us uh, in the province. And that's what this slide really helps to represent. As Chris said earlier, you know, nearly a $9 billion tourism industry uh, at the start of this year and uh, where we're sitting right now with a 63% decline in expenditures and the potential of over 30,000 tourism related jobs lost. What we also know through our conversations with tourism businesses around the province is that about 6.5% of those businesses are now permanently closed. Uh, looking at it through our, our hotel sector, uh, we also wanted to make sure that we're measuring the impact on hotel revenue. And so the scenarios that we used to build out hotel revenue forecasting was um, built out using the most recent uh, hotel data that's available, as well as the most recent conditions as relates to border restrictions. And uh, so what you can see from this is what we know today is that the projected hotel revenue loss for 2020 is going to be about 1.3 billion or again a 54% decline. I think it's always important to be looking at uh, what's happening with our airlines as well. So just very quickly know that uh, our team does look at a number of different data sources as it relates to uh, air travel into our province. And uh, our, this is using a variety of different sources that we have available to us to really look at carrying capacity or the air capacity on a month by month basis. Now, what's really important to note here is it's really challenging right now because scheduled service versus actual service levels varies dramatically. Uh, and but what's sorry, what it's helping us to do right now is to at least gain some idea around air supply and, and air demand. Now, for the most part, what we know is domestic airlines, particularly our, our national airlines, their priority for the remainder of this year is going to be the domestic market. And that's probably very similar to airlines around the world. But what we also know is the airlines right now are all planning for 2021. Uh, in fact, most of them have already loaded their domestic and international services for next year. And they've done so based on pre-COVID levels and passenger levels and the routes that they were flying prior to COVID. Now, it's really important to note that this is really just a starting point for the airlines. They want to make sure that they are, they're planning further out. They're, they're in the position to operationalize flights. It's also going to help, you know, with travelers that are hopefully, you know, they're, they're wanting to think that there's a, a future here. They want to start planning for something in the future. And so by having those flights available, it's going to actually also help get those bookings into the system and slowly help to rebuild traveler confidence. Because what we know right now is traveler confidence is probably our biggest barrier uh, outside of COVID itself. And uh, we see this across all of our industry sectors. And the result of this is that the booking window for travel has shortened to about 30 to 60 days. And really for Albertans, it's the 30 days or less. And we've heard this very consistently now from our accommodation sector, from the airlines, uh, as well as our activity providers around the province. Um, I'm just going to wrap this up with a few other insights that are, I think, helping to position uh, where the opportunities are going to be for us as we're going forward. 
uh, particularly as the province prepares to move into phase three. So right now we still sit in phase two, two um, but as we move into phase three, we'll be in a position to officially welcome travelers from outside of the province. At this time, Travel Alberta's marketing is really focused on the regional uh, markets um, until such time we do move to the phase three or we do receive a green light from the government to be able to do promotions in other parts of, of Canada. Uh, but what we can tell you right now is that the research is indicating that, you know, generally speaking, Canadians are slowly becoming more comfortable with travel as they look ahead to this fall and winter. Uh, Canadians uh, do are starting to recognize that they're, they're not going to be traveling uh, south this winter. So they're wanting to look for options. And what we've also seen is through uh, Google searches uh, for winter destinations, activities and accommodation, that the searches last month were at 42% over the previous year. So we do feel that there's some pent up demand here and there is an opportunity to see some winter visitation, obviously within the province, but hopefully from, from travelers from other provinces coming here to, to Alberta. British Columbia and Ontario hold the, the greatest potential for us from a leisure perspective. Uh, BC is a little bit further along the path of purchase. You can see here that 62% uh, are already either considering or have booked a trip for this winter Ontario is a little further behind, but still quite strong. And what it means for us is we need to just make sure that we're out there, we're in front of them, that we're helping to inspire them to come out to visit this winter and that uh, they're feeling confident about traveling to the province. And as I said, we are actually working on um, um, promotions right now that as soon as we get that green light, we're going to be ready to do uh, more promotions interprovincially. Um, and that's going to be critical for us because, as I said earlier, that booking window of 30 to 60 days, we need to make sure that we're really tapping in at that right time. And the further we go outside of Alberta, it's maybe the booking window is going to be stretched out a little bit more, but it's really important for us to get those promotions out there because ultimately people that are traveling into Alberta are going to spend longer in the province, they're going to use our accommodation, and they're going to support our airline partners. And the last slide that I've just put on here is Alberta resident because overall, uh, we can't be successful if Albertans um, aren't receptive to uh, visitors coming from other parts of Canada. And what we know right now is since about the middle of July, we've seen that Alberta resident sentiment has sat at the 40% or higher, and that's higher compared to most of the other provinces in Canada. So this is just a really quick uh, overview, but know that we actually, uh, part of our Connections Live series, we are going to be doing an in-depth look at all of our research on October the 1st. So. We'll encourage you to, to join us for a uh, further update because there's even more research that's coming in this week. Chris, I'm going to turn it back to you quickly for an update on some of our industry programs. Thanks, Karen. And, and we just have a few couple of slides left here so we can burn through these quickly. Um, maybe the next slide, please, Karen. Uh, was there cooperative in there as well? There we go. So the co-op investment program is a program that we've had for a number of years. This year we were able to find a budget of uh, through reallocation of uh, a couple of different programs to pump it up to $5 million. There's been two intakes. The first intake was uh, June 1st to 30th. There were 307 applicants for a total of around $12.5 million. Uh, the second intake is open right now, September 1st. It closes next week, the 30th. Uh, we're expecting uh, uh, to be overwhelmed again. There's just so many uh, people with needs out there. It's really open for public sector, uh, nonprofits, and industry, private sector industry. There's two streams, experience and product development, as well as promotional activities. It is It has been focused on uh, supporting organizations and, and businesses uh, in their COVID struggles. Quite frankly, that's really what we're working on. So um, if uh, if Companies, businesses, organizations in your area are interested. Uh, certainly, reach out to us if you haven't. Uh, if you don't have any information, we can direct you to the appropriate uh, sources. Thank you. Next one there. Connections Live. We had our first Connections Live um, session this morning. Um, Highly successful launch last year from April through to June. We had about 2,400 people log into 13 webinars live. Uh, another thousand have watched the recorded versions. So we're returning it this fall. And as I mentioned, we did we kicked it off this morning with a bit of an update on the state of tourism, very similar to what you're seeing today. I think there were 320 people that had logged in for that. 
Um, we have a number of topics identified uh, moving forward, and we're, we're thinking of doing these if demand is there uh, almost weekly or bi-weekly right through until April. Um, there'll be both internal speakers from Travel Alberta as well as uh, industry and professional um, from outside within the industry that we'll bring in. Lots of interest and in, uh, obviously on the COVID side of things, and we'll be focusing on that and how COVID is affecting things such as business operations, business development, uh, research and insights, all these types of things. So watch uh, for Connections Live emails and, and newsletters, and Patrick certainly probably is aware and can direct uh, any of you to that as well. And then moving on to our last uh, um, slide, I just want to throw in a plug for our Travel Alberta Industry Hub uh, website. This is really your go-to or the industry go-to site for all things tourism. Helps you understand the programs and services that Travel Alberta is working on, but then also more importantly, shares with you some of the other learning and research and other information that's out there to support industry and businesses and communities as we move forward. So excellent site. Uh, the uh, Connections Live will be promoted on this as will a number of other things. And I think, Karen, that's probably the last slide. And sorry if it took so long, Matthew, but uh, we wanted to throw a lot at you this morning or this afternoon. That was excellent, and that's quite all right. If you have more, um, feel free. I see. Um, so what we're going to do, we'll enter the Q&A portion. Um, and I know that many of the uh, the audience members have some questions and I know Patrick and I do as well. So thank you again just for presenting that and providing the overview. Uh, it was very insightful and we do actually have um, an immediate question here. Um, and I think actually a lot of the comments, uh, a lot of the uh, organizations and uh, operators here just are hoping that uh, we can get some of the slide decks. So I'm, I'm sure that uh, you guys can float the slides over to Pat and then we can circulate it to uh, our infinite uh, WC members and whomever. So just uh, for our um, audience members on this on the side, um, there is a chat um, a chat board that you can write your uh, questions in rather and then I'll uh, direct them through. I know Pat, you had a question to start it off, so so go for it. Um, yeah, Karen, I think this question's for you. Um, just wondering, um, with uh, the one slide deck, you were talking about the jobs lost, uh, the 30,000 K plus. Um, just wondering how many of those jobs, if you have that ratio, uh, how many of them were Albertans and how many would be foreign workers? Thanks, Patrick. That's actually a great question. I would say I don't have um, I don't have that specific breakdown, but I'm going to take that one away and see if the research actually tells us that or not. Um, from based on what I I can recall, I, I don't think we had. Uh, I don't. I it should have been looking specifically at Albertans uh, versus foreign workers, but uh, I'd like to confirm that for you for sure. So happy to do so. We may be able to generate that statistic just by looking at the uh, the job losses within the communities of, of Banff, for instance, and what percentage of their workers are foreign uh, workers versus domestic. Um, but yeah, good, really good question. So good question. figure that out. We have a comment just uh, that came through. If if you guys have um, any additional data that you were gathering through the research, um, obviously uh, conducting that research, you've presented some data on the slide decks, but mm -hmm. is there any other valuable data that came from the research? Maybe you can talk about some additional data that maybe you guys analyzed throughout the process. <laughs> Karen loves data and stats. Yeah. So she can talk about Honestly, I'll say right now that's a that's a big conversation. There's there's a lot that's just come in for us, and um, actually there's even more. And that's why we pushed out doing the um, the research update a, a couple of weeks, just because it's actually some new reports that are just coming in for us right now. Uh, we have been working really closely with Destination Canada, who's been doing a lot of things, obviously at the national level, but wherever possible, we want to layer in and make sure that we're getting a, a real lens on on anything that's coming in nationally. What's that mean for Alberta? So that's um, a lot of those reports and anything that we've shared here, I'll just uh, again give a plug to the industry website and that's uh, the Travel Alberta Industry Hub. There is a visitor and market research section where all of the reports are actually available right now. So there is the new tourism economics report 
um, as well, the resident sentiment up until uh, I believe it was the middle of this month, which is you know, a week ago, uh, the resident sentiment was being done on a weekly basis. They've now moved it to a, a bi-monthly basis. So uh, there is, you can really start to see that, that, that trend analysis that uh, I shared with you in that one slide, but you can also see uh, relative to all the other provinces um, and very specifically, uh, you know, the changes or the fluctuations. Um, other things that we're, we're studying very closely is traveler intent and behavior and uh, the third wave report. So a lot of the stuff that I just shared in here uh, was referencing uh, the second wave report, but the third wave report is actually due to be coming in early next week. So that's another great example of as stuff is coming in, we're trying to integrate it into our findings and really just see where there's some consistencies, where there might still be some um, things that just don't jive or that, um, you know, maybe there's even some gaps. But what we're now starting to see is there all the different data that's coming in is layering in and starting to tell a very, um, very similar story for us. So I don't know if I can get into anything too specific uh, right at the moment, but I would encourage you to know that there's a lot more information that is available and we'll be happy to, you know, you can do a follow-up session with me on this too, but in the next week or two, we're going to have a lot of new research coming in. One, one of the uh, interesting stats that's, that's um, always out there is in a typical year, going back to 2018, about 84% of visits in this province is done domestically by Albertans. So Albertans moving around the province further than 40 kilometers, visiting friends and relatives uh, um, uh, for recreation, leisure, you know, business, whatever. Uh, but of the, <clears throat> excuse me, of that 84 or 85 per, uh, number, they only actually generate about 54% of the revenue or expenditures in the province. So you can see the importance of reaching outside the province is huge. And that's why these studies that Karen's uh, been tapping into in her team around um, uh, visitor intent in other provinces and other regions is so vitally important because we need to know, we, first of all, we need to have permission to be able to market and promote outside of the province to try and open up the markets again. But we need to know how what the what the in, intent and in, in, uh, the feeling is in those markets. Are they willing and able to to move around Canada again? Um, and then from there, the further you go, the, the more money people spend. So you go in the US and then of course overseas visitors, um, particularly uh, our friends from Europe and Germany and the UK, uh, but then China and Japan vitally important because they come, they come for longer and they spend more. So that's traditionally why Travel Alberta's um, marketing and promotion efforts have been extremely focused from the province. And we've had to do a, a real change in direction, almost 180 degrees from being externally focused from a marketing perspective to trying to encourage Albertans to explore their own backyards and, and play around the province. If I may, I'll just build on what Chris just said is um, mm -hmm. that's why that first slide that I shared with you around uh, how travelers, uh, how Albertans have historically spent is, is so important um, because they haven't, we haven't historically spent that much in Alberta as we've spent in other parts of Canada. But we, one piece of that we know already from the research mm -hmm. is that as much as we're looking at, we're looking at other provinces and their willingness to travel to Alberta every other province is looking at the same. They're looking at Albertans traveling out and what is trending really high is Alberta's, Albertans are some of the, um, they're gonna be some of the quickest to travel interprovincially once there's the opportunity to do so. And we know that in some cases that's already happening. You know, they, you know, they, people are, have been traveling this summer, even though provinces are, you know, they're saying, um, you know, at this time they're, they might not be high for us. We're not in that phase where we're promoting People are already traveling, but as soon as, you know, there's almost like the, the green light for people to, to feel comfortable because the government is saying that, uh, you know, we're, we're inviting people from other provinces, we also know that Albertans are going to leave the province. Thanks, guys. Um, another question at the side here. Uh, when When is the third wave report? When the third wave report? Do you know when it will be on the website? Um, yes. It's probably another, maybe a, a week from now, I would say. Maybe, I would check maybe later next week or the, the week after. I, I think the report's only just come into our office or it's coming in this week, which would be today or tomorrow. Perfect, thanks. Um, oh, another one came in. So uh, is there any research on how 
the behavior has changed as a result of COVID and how it's impacting consumer expenditures and those experiences they participate in. I'm curious if we will see a new EQ. Hmm. That's actually that that next wave report. It's actually a, it's the Global Tourism Watch um, Travel Intent and Behavior Study, and it's actually quite comprehensive. It actually does break it down and looks at um, you know changes in in traveler behavior relative to the types of experiences that they're interested in. And uh, to add your your question, Matthew, is once we get the report in, we don't just post it right away. Our team will take a look at it, and then we'll try and develop some insights relative to Alberta. So there'll be a special part, a uh, special addition added to the end around what this, what we are making assumptions right now, what that means for Alberta, particularly as it relates to our experienced providers and the accommodation sector. But uh, that that report does actually speak to a little bit more of that. And I'm sorry, I just don't have it right off the top of my head, but I, I can say that the research is helping to inform us that way. Perfect. Um, another question uh, I have here that I was taking notes, so I might be completely off base with this, but um, I think, Chris, this might be geared towards you. Uh, you had touched upon the rebound strategy as like a two year that you guys develop. Can you talk about the development of that? Because that must have been a quick turnaround in terms of developing a strategy to tackle um, the issues of COVID-19. And what advice do you have for like local governments, government organizations, bodies, what have you, um, to really quickly pivot and develop strategies to tackle um, what we've all been through. Um, we're lacking revenue. Our main revenue source drivers are suffering as a result. So um, can you just talk about that process? Um, elaborate on that, please. Good. I'm, well, I'm going to rebound and, and pass it off to our Vice President of, of Tourism <laughs> Strategy, um, who, who really play the key role in developing the, the rebound strategy. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks. Sure. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say that you're right. We had to pivot pretty fast, but Chris did uh, reference that it, in some ways, if there was ever a good time in all of this, it happened right at the beginning of the fiscal force. So we were already planning um, kind of a bridge strategy year because there was the development of the 10 year tourism strategy that Chris referred to at the start. Um, so we, we did, we pivoted pretty fast and like um, probably a lot of destinations we were well, quite frankly, it wasn't it wasn't easy because we had no idea what this pandemic was or what it was going to look like, you know, next week, let alone six months from now. So the strategy itself was really built out as well. We we knew it was going to have a significant impact. It did very quickly and it was going to take time to see it come back. So that's what we said. Let's look at it. This is two years and it's going to be unlike any other strategy that we've ever done. We're going to be revisiting it almost every two weeks. Um, to, to see whether or not it still holds any any value. Um, what I would say right now to any other destinations in our province is um, become familiar with it and, and work with us. And that's really why we've restarted our Connections Live series this week too, is because now six months into this pandemic, we feel like we have a little bit more research to, to work from, and we're starting to get a, a little bit more of a, a look into the future. You know, at the beginning of this year, we were looking 10 years past and 10 years forward. We're now looking six months arrears and, and looking maybe six months into the future. So it's going to be really uh, important that we're all working together. And uh, and that's why I really value this opportunity um, and this invite to come out and actually share some of this research, because if it any way can help inform your business decisions and, and, and your investments, because all, in, all businesses in the province right now have very limited resources. So it comes down to a lot of partnership, partnership with each other, partnerships with us, and wherever we can collaborating on our on our strategies. Um, and know that we'd really like to, you know, any way that we can help you in your destinations, we want to make sure that we're doing so. I hope that answered your question a little bit, Matthew. There's no, there's un, unfortunately no one perfect answer, I think, right at the moment. Um, it really comes down to right now, the more information I think we're all sharing, cost sharing, um, the stronger we're going to be as a destination, and that's going to honestly make us stronger and more viable as a destination once we start to see international travel return. So I think, like, just to dovetail off of that, like, we're all about sharing and, and all that and creating the relationships. Is Do you see that, that, how do I phrase this? Like, in my mind, I'm, like, thinking, what's the future of the travel industry in Alberta? And mm -hmm. is it, is it um, pivotal? 
and it does it lean on that information sharing more than ever now like how much of that do you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, it's a different world but we can share information more but now this this has hit us so how much more important is it now and where do we go yeah. right um, yeah i yeah. i fully agree with what you're you're saying matthew and uh you know that i think chris you touched on this briefly at the beginning you know prior to covid uh, a lot of the work that travel Bird was doing was really trying to diversify where people were traveling within the province it was really in a lot of ways leveraging that there's already awareness out there for the Rockies. We know that there's demand. Let's leverage that. But when people are here, we want to encourage them to travel to other places and really starting to um, really our destination development team, really helping different parts of our province to really build up new product. I'll be honest with you, that was a really slow, slow development. If there's any you know, real opportunity through COVID, this has been a bit of an equalizer and we have all of a real opportunity to real rebuild the province together and really rebuild what the story is going to be for Alberta as we go forward. So when we're out there and we're starting to promote it and starting to talk about it, there is still demand for Alberta and we know that the awareness that was out there before will continue to be. We need to leverage that. But this is a real time for the opportunity, sorry, for communities to really work together, strengthen the community. Uh, because that's ultimately going to make the destination stronger as it goes forward. And I think we can see that from all levels of government. Um, you know, that's what we're seeing, obviously, with the, you know, the ask around uh, the destination management plan as well. It's also going to really strengthen communities in our province. And so we're actually quite excited for that new, that new strategy going forward. I think Patrick has one here. So, uh, Chris, you mentioned at the beginning of the presentation uh, talking about the the migration of some of the stuff from the from the the government into travel Alberta. Is there is there anything you can say of what's going to be staying with the province? Um, and I don't know if you can get into that, but I'm just curious. No, it's a good question, uh, Patrick, and, and I think everything's on the table for discussion right now. But clearly, as as the department is being reorganized and restructured, and there is no longer a dedicated tourism division, um, there's some question about what you know, the watering down and, and dissolving of of a focused team, right? And we we want to ensure that there is. So some of the key areas, uh, in particular, where there's question marks, are would be around the policy team, uh, which used to be under Patrick Mattern, as you well know. Um, and and really Stephanie Jones and her team, which work, you know, there is no tourism policy within government, but there's a number, a whole range of policies within other ministries that affect tourism. And so we have to try and influence and affect change to those policies to drive uh, and create a, an environment that allows tourism to prosper, right? So one of the questions would be, can that be done within Travel Alberta as, as a separate agency? Or should that remain within the departments to be closer to government? And you know we're we're exploring that, and and we will work with the department on that. Um, another piece, of course, is uh, with the establishment of uh, Invest Alberta, which is a new crown corporation, very similar to ours, but we'll have a mandate for being the outward-facing promotional uh, agency to attract investment to the province. Um, you know, what role will they play in in identifying? Um, tourism opportunities for investment. Uh, and we'll have to explore that as well. I think, you know, there's the International Office Network, which is supported, uh, which supports Travel Alberta, uh, sorry, the Invest Alberta team. Uh, Travel Alberta and the, you know, previously has also benefited from the resources of the team as well. Um, they are involved in, in delivering um, trade and investment uh, mandates across the province, across the world in key markets. So there's there's bits and pieces like that, Patrick, and I, I think ultimately what government wants to do is uh, create efficiencies, uh, eliminate any duplications, uh, make it easy for you guys, stakeholders, to know who to go to to get to get the information and support you need. Um, and as much as I would like to think that in the days of the tourism division, you know, we cooperated and collaborated closely with Travel Alberta, there was always a bit of uncertainty even within our own staff. Uh, as to when things should be handed off and when they shouldn't and that type of thing. And we need to fix that. So that's what we're looking at. <clears throat> Thanks for that question, Brian. Perfect. I don't see any other questions in, but I know that um, 
in in the presentation we were talking about like regionalization and different regional partners and all that and we actually do and i know that um councillor bigger wants to provide to just talk about the canadian badlands a little bit uh, she's the president of the badlands so donna i might flip it over to you quickly if you have an update as well on that end thanks matthew um and yes chris i moved to our family out here so Oh, okay. I'm keeping my, keeping okay. my visa card closed. That's okay. acceptable. Um, <laughs> I um, just wanted to let you know that, uh, of course, I think everybody knows that the Badlands has uh, um, looking at restructuring, maybe um, bringing in um, consultants to find more value to to us as operators, um and as municipalities to make the bad, uh, Canadian Badlands, you know, a destination as um, more like the Canadian Rockies. So we've we've um, interviewed a couple consultants. Uh, their proposals will be in this week. So we're wanting to move ahead quite quickly with this. Um, once that's done, we'll be able. The information that you're giving now is going to be so valuable, and I appreciate. Uh, you coming on the line to to keep us involved in that. Um, with the um, Canadian Badlands, we've been working with um, Government of Alberta and and Travel Alberta to and that and you're right that partnership is going to be so important going forward. I know that um, our our development programs is not as many let's say operators or as many places to stay in the Canadian Badlands and but I do think that the day trips have has a, have increased coming out of the city but if we could get them to stay over and 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 um and with our municipalities bring more value to the Badlands I I think that these um with us going forward I think it's going to help everybody and I'm, I'm glad we're, we're all working together on this if you have any questions about the Badlands sure um you're welcome, them. That's, that's an interesting point you, you make about uh, having um, Albertans stay over one more night. Um, we have been doing some uh, impact modeling under Karen's team, and one of the scenarios that we looked at was what what would happen or what economic impact would it generate if we had uh, Albertans spend one additional addition one additional night in a rural Alberta setting. So exactly as you're saying, if they're going into Stedler or or Drayton Valley or 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 Drumheller, um, and instead of maybe driving back to Calgary the same day, if they spend one night there, or if they're spending one night there to spend two nights there, and you know it, it was an interesting stat because I mean it, it's not the answer to all of our problems, but it does generate considerable uh, revenue for the province and and for the communities. I think, Karen, what was it about half a billion dollars? Uh, I think. You're on mute. Sorry. There you go. Sorry, I was just actually trying to pull it up while you're while you're saying that. Just like to give you a number. Um, let me see. But I think it, I think it was. Yeah. But exactly what you're saying is is really just trying to um, build on exactly what Donna just said. Is is we want to encourage people not to just do the day trips to stay overnight, and then that's ultimately going to support the investment into new experience offering. That's going to hopefully even increase it even more. But let me see if I can find that for us. You know, it's it's interesting. Um, you said you've experienced more day drives out you know there's all sorts of different strategies and plans in place and if you look at tourism calgary they talk very much about being a hub and spoke right so they want people to stay in calgary uh particularly visitors from outside the province and do day trips out to places like banff or for that matter uh, pincher creek or uh, drum heller you know places like that and that, you know, at the same time, you guys are looking at, okay, so how do we get people to spend more money in our communities and uh, spend an initial night there? So our job is to try and work with both of you to try and, you know, find find solutions that, that meet the, the needs of, of all communities. And I think there is room for that to happen because different uh, visitors from different parts of the world are going to spend uh, different amounts of time in different centers as well. So there is potential. Did you find that, Karen, or no? It was. Is it the, the preliminaries that we had based on the work that we were, the modeling that we were doing was 409 million. So. 
great, thanks. I agree, and then when we do get our consultant hired and moving forward, we will be definitely keeping in contact with Travel Alberta, especially for your for your staff and great. for your for your help for your um, knowledge and uh, moving together for moving forward together instead of uh, keeping. We need to we need to help each other, like as a region, but as a province too. Absolutely. Happy to help. Can I just speak to that issue about uh, stays within our area? Can you folks hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so this is BJ, and my husband and I have the Rosebud Country Inn. And uh, I want to say first two things of encouragement. Um, number one is we are dealing uh, from our normal with a completely different demographic. So where before we would deal with season ticket holders, et cetera, to the Rosebud Theater, we had a couple of bloggers come and stay who are in the 30-somethings. And from uh, those days, we have already had over nine bookings. I mean, it doesn't seem like much, but it's huge in this time of COVID. And the second point is that even uh, people who are now starting to venture out a little bit, rather than staying one night, they're staying at least two and sometimes three nights. So it speaks to exactly what you're saying and what you're trying to do. And uh, I think there's only room for more improvement. So just wanted to give that bit of encouragement. Thank you very much for that. Are there any other speakers or people who have questions they want to throw out there? Patrick? does Patrick always does yeah well I'll talk forever um I was just wondering like obviously the industry conference is is a challenge but is there is there any plans to you know with the release of of new strategy and stuff like that to have some sort of um, virtual gathering or some sort of celebration of work being done some you know some knowledge sharing that kind of thing maybe not in the usual time of the conference, but it, you know, in early, like in January or something like that around other news. I, I think we've been looking at that, Patrick. The, the key thing initially was uh, the restrictions on gatherings uh, and numbers for the industry conference posed a problem, right? And, and you know, the conference attracts upward of five to 600 people. So that just was not going to be possible. We looked, did look at uh, some type of virtual gathering or small gatherings. Uh, and, and what we decided was at the moment, our priority should be for the uh, to direct as much resources as possible. So financial resources towards supporting industry, which has allowed us to pump up the, the co-op program, for instance, that I spoke of, the co-op investment program. So we've redirected some of the budget from the industry conference to that. Uh, at the same time, the Connections Live is kind of a, an attempt to keep some momentum and some focus on the industry that the conference would have. So you're going to see from now through to April, if demand is there, you'll see weekly hour long uh, webinars on, on topics and things. And then we've been kicking around some other ideas. I don't know if Karen wants to jump in this in here, but yeah, you know, we're, we, we share, we share your frustration. We'd love to gather people together and, you know, there's the Alto awards. We've had to pause that in partnership with our, uh, our non our volunteer board. Uh, so it is it is frustrating, but we are really trying to direct the resources uh, accordingly and appropriately at this point. Karen, do you have anything else? To no, you actually you touched on it um, well right now, Chris. I mean that we're, we're hopeful through Connections Live um, this fall. It's going to we know that uh, quite honestly when we're putting it together and based on even some some input from industry partners, I know that you know as we're going forward, if there's something specific that you think would be helpful. That we're not doing we actually welcome that feedback too so you know this is that we've got a preliminary plan but even knowing that there's that interest is going to help us because we have enough right now that's going to carry us into next year uh and then to your, your point patrick is you know we do want to look at as soon as the conditions allow us to start doing more we want to be able to be in a position to, to maybe hopefully offer offer more but we um at this point haven't really thought about uh, an industry conference in that way uh, until maybe till next year, and that uh, 
you know, a lot of things that are happening right now are obviously virtual, but even some of the stuff going into 2021 is it's kind of like that hybrid approach. Can we do a little bit of an in-person component with something in that virtual space as well? So those are some of the things that we are looking at, uh, what other organizations are doing or at different events and other learnings that we can use to apply to our industry. Yeah, for me, for me, it was just the one the one thought on, um, especially when we're we're putting such a, a I think at the local government level, is to really look at uh, building out the network that that you guys have through industry. So you know to, the ability to talk to developers and things like that of of uh, basically tourism infrastructure and stuff. So just the idea of having some way to to have exposure and connect and continue to network build without things like the industry conference but it sounds like yeah those if, if there is any suggestion by me it's just to ensure that we can figure out the best way to have those channels um, either enhanced or or something so that we can just stay in and, and you know and, and promote what we got on the ground or what we could have on the ground Very important. Throwing it out there one final time for questions, comments. Hearing none. Chris, Karen, we thank you very much for um, your presentation and your participation in the conversation. Thanks, um, we hope you guys uh, can come back uh, in the future for sure. Uh, look to touch base with you in person at some point soon, hopefully. Um, and otherwise, you're free to stay on the call. Uh, what we're going to do Unknown now. Unknown participant is now exiting. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you're free to stay on. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to proceed into um, discussing uh, just with participants um, news from any of the support groups. Uh, we'll go around uh, and talk about any challenges or opportunities that. Um, individuals or businesses in the region is, are facing any tips and advice. So it's kind of a round table that we're going to do now. Well, well, thanks for the opportunity. I think Karen and I both have a 315. So we've got <laughs> eight minutes, two, three, four, five. I really appreciate the opportunity yep. and, and really enjoy working with uh, Donna and Patrick and the others. So uh, uh, let's stay in touch. Thanks. For sure. Thanks, guys. Thank you see very back. much. Thanks for this opportunity. Thanks. Yes, thank you. All right, so for for those still on the call, um, this will be uh, uploaded to YouTube as well. Um, so feel free to share it uh, once the clip is uploaded or rewatch it or what have you. Um, definitely some good information that was shared there. So I'm going to go around um, just for those who have been in this call, you know the drill. Um, I think that I'll start in just in terms of business support groups. Wendy, if you're still on the call. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, perfect. We'll start with you. Here, I'll um, turn my camera on. Hopefully you can see me okay there. All right, so is hi, there, everybody. Is this all going to be recorded? Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll be somewhat brief. I know um, we have a lot of things coming out of our office here over the next bit. Um, a lot of projects were on a little bit of a standstill or halt, just not knowing what direction COVID was going to take some things. Um, but I think now we're feeling some really good levels of where we're going So with these projects. So I'm going to just give a quick brief overview of four key initiatives that we have launched or will be launching here in the coming days and weeks ahead. So I guess the first one is our succession matching planning initiative. This one actually started back in November. We were having discussions with about seven and eight other community futures offices throughout southern Alberta. And so they were, high, uh, Community Futures Highwood is the lead on this initiative. And they submitted a proposal there in January, February, and they found out weeks prior to COVID that we were successful in our application to bring some succession planning, training, workshops, and matching initiatives um, just right before COVID um, had hit. So they realigned the project a little bit and we still felt, you know what, we still had businesses that were for sale up before COVID. 
there was still the supports needed, right? Um, agriculture sector is still doing quite well. And there is farms that we can see just around the Wheatland County area that are for sale. So we persevered with the project and it is now um, started. So our sessions began back in mid-September and there's three different series that businesses can follow in. And basically if it's a family to family business that we have special training and supports that are meant to deal with that type of transition or sale. So we can match people up with that program. We also have another series where, you know, maybe you're just beginning to think, you know, maybe I'm five years out or six months out or longer um, and you're and you're a business and you don't necessarily have a family member to pass it on to. Uh, so we're looking, we have a program geared just for those types of businesses that are just beginning to think about it. And then we also have sessions and series for nonprofit industry. So um, again, they can go to our website at wildrose.albertacf.com. And there's a link in there that talks all about succession planning. And by all means, they can reach out to me and we can help you identify what is the best series to follow into. Uh, the sessions have started. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't consider still registering because those sessions are recorded and you do get to work with an advisor. So there's still lots of time to listen to these sessions and participate. Okay, so this program, the winter and fall series will run between now, right through till about March and April, depending on the vendor. So lots of opportunities to still join in. And then we're gonna reevaluate the project, where we're at, what changes do we need to make, and we'll be launching a year two. So there will be opportunity again come the second year. Okay, so that's succession matching and planning. Um, I guess on the matching side of that, for those businesses that, you know, maybe they've been up for sale for several years and they just haven't been able to find a successful buyer, uh, there is, a, um, through successionmatching.com, an opportunity where we can support 12 businesses to obtain a, a heavily discounted um, coupon or certificate to help have succession matching help those sellers find a buyer and so the value of that is two thousand dollars and if you get the coupon code from us we can drop that down to twenty five dollars so it's a pretty great opportunity for those businesses to help find buyers okay we're also working on small business week so that's approaching on october 18th to the 24th uh, we reached out to all of our chambers and they're, everybody's busy um, just in their own businesses and these chambers are business led. So they haven't, we all haven't been able to find out, you know, what is going to be a great offering for Small Business Week. So we as a CF uh, decided as a team that we were going to lead Small Business Week and work with the chambers to help promote those session and events and activities um, that we're going to launch. and have the chambers partner with us to promote these initiatives. So we're heavily working on all the session topics. Uh, Wheeling County has been really fabulous of, of helping find and source and delivering some of the topics through Google and, and what have you. Um, so thank you. And we will be working on developing those final sessions here over the next few days. And we're hoping to launch here sometime next week once I get everything uploaded to our website. So that will be out. Um, we're, we've titled it Business Exists Here. These sessions are open up for the entire region as we're working with five different chambers. So we just felt that this was a really positive forward thinking um, title or theme. And we're gonna have topics anywhere from marketing to some mental health supports and training. Uh, we're looking at sessions on Google so a marketing component, there's going to be some customer service training. We're looking at employee retention. We're looking at doing some chamber roundtables. So I'm working on those today. Uh, we're also looking at uh, procurement sessions and discovering some potential opportunities within. Todd Hirsch will be there with ATB to present. So I think it's going to be pretty inspiring, pretty uplifting, pretty positive forward moving. Okay, so that's Small Business Week. Um, we're also working, and this is going to get promoted here within the next day or two, um, we have some funding available to work in partnership with the chambers in our region 
to provide them some funding to deliver a shop local campaign. So that we want to see over the winter season just to help encourage that and keep some of the money here spent within the region. So we're working with the chambers to promote that. So that will be coming out soon as well. And the survey, we're working on this second survey. It's taken a little longer than we had planned just with many of our municipalities being gone and staff away in August. We just couldn't get the survey out as quick as we'd planned. So that's due to launch next Monday. So should have everything up on the website here by the end of the weekend for that. And I guess last but not least, which has been a big project here for us here in our office, has been our Ag Tourism Cluster Challenge. So I've been talking about this project for a year and we were ready to launch just when COVID hit. And again, we had to sit down, re-strategize. We had to submit addendums to or amendment contracts to all of our four, three funders in this initiative. So I just got approval that the last one was accepted. So we're just working on now signing the contract. And I have a meeting here at three o'clock and we're going to talk about execution of it. So pretty excited about that. So there's going to be all sorts of training opportunities and business plan development, that whole product plan, product development for those operators that are looking into pursuing, you know, more egg tourism um, experiences and events on the farm or off the farm and with other sectors like restaurants, hotels, that type of thing. So we should have more information of that coming out here in the next few weeks as we finalize contracts and arrangements. And then with part of that Ag Tourism strategy, I am now going to be rescheduling all of the visits I started on in the spring to go back and talk about the Ag Tourism strategy that we're looking to pursue. So um, I do my first launch one here uh, October 22nd, and then once I go through that launch one, then I'll be working with all of the rest of the municipalities to come and pitch that strategy and the Egg Tourism Cluster Challenge. So there's more, but I'll leave it at that. Those are the really pertinent things that um, we really wanted to get out. So if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to ask or just send me it over an email. Thanks, Wendy. Does anyone have any questions right now, top of mind? Perfect. Uh, I'll move to uh, BJ. Are you still at the call? I think I see you. Yeah. Yes, I'm still on the call. I see you now. <laughs> <laughs> um, update of the big booming Rosebud Country Inn and market. First of all, the market. The market is going well. We continue to have orders placed every week. November, we are doing a trial run for delivery. Um, just because with the winter months coming, we want to uh, see what the buy-in is for something like that. So for three weeks in November, we are going to uh, give the option uh, that we will deliver. Uh, this will also allow us at the market to deliver um, beer and spirits, whatever. Uh, as we stand right now here uh, for the market for the inn, we cannot do that. But with delivery, we can if the car comes or the vehicle comes from the brewery uh, directly to the like there's no stops in between. It's just the way that the regulations are. So that's gonna be an interesting thing that happens in November. So that's number one. Number two is that the Rosebud Theater has announced a Christmas show. Uh, rather than 224 seats, there will only be 62 and they will be doing a full plate service. Uh, because the numbers are so decreased, uh, I am introducing my own uh, package, uh, which will have um, a meal served here at the inn, as well as uh, entertainment, Christmas entertainment that will be provided for our guests. So they will have two options uh, to go to. And so uh, hopefully that will help to fill in the town with various people. Um, number three, we have started due to the fact that there is no uh, 
restaurant service here in Rosebud, uh, particularly during the week, and that a number of the good spots in uh, Drumheller, for example, uh, Athens, Greek restaurant, they have closed Sunday, Mondays, and Tuesdays, of which we are getting a number of guests on those nights. And so I have started making evening meals. So please don't die and please don't book in too often to come and see me, but you're gonna see the, the results. And so far it's pretty favorable through a lot of uh, hard work and uh, uh, just fun. So it's a whole new avenue for me called the old pivot. And so that's what I'm doing in uh, those three different areas. So that's my update. Thanks, BJ. Are there any questions for BJ? And I'm just going to read uh, just in the chat at the sidebar. Um, well, I think Wendy was presenting. Uh, Karen uh, kindly just kind of provided a follow up regarding Patrick's question. Um, if the potential 30,000 tourism related jobs are lost, uh, our Albertans uh, or foreign workers, we use Statistics Canada data in the forecasting and there isn't a distinction between domestic or foreign workers. So the projected loss would include foreign workers. And hopefully we'll get some follow up there as well, just for everybody's information. So thanks, Karen, for providing that follow up. Um, Anastasia Martin Stillwell, if you want to um, jump in, provide an update, a little intro. Oh gosh, I don't I don't know if I can uh, fill the shoes of my colleagues, Karen and Chris, <laughs> after all of that. Um, uh, just uh, a, a quick note to um, uh, Chris mentioning our cooperative investment program. The fall winter uh, intake, um, as he noted, um, is open until uh, the end of September. Um, we are not accepting any late applications, so I encourage um, anyone who is, uh, you know, planning to do any partnered marketing um, for the fall winter time frame um, or any um, uh, product experience development. Um, I can, uh, as sort of other roundtable updates are happening, I'll send the link. There's some criteria. There are some eligible, ineligible tourism businesses. Um, you know, this is a program that has pivoted to a, a grant funding scope really to help support sort of COVID related um, pivots, um, marketing, and obviously to assist with cash flow. So there are some primary focuses to the funding um, for these intakes. Um, I will send the link. If anyone has any questions, you know, please don't hesitate to outreach um, to the respective cooperative, you know, Andy, who's for the South, um, or myself. Um, secondly, quick point, um, if there are any tourism businesses um, who uh, have a new or enhanced or existing um, winter uh, experience that they're looking to uh, promote um, uh, this winter uh, season, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if it's something that you think that uh, is not on my radar from an experience development perspective, um, please don't hesitate to outreach. I'll additionally add um, my email address in the uh, communication box um, just to keep finger on the pulse um, uh, as I can, you know, broker some information internally for any, um, uh, you know, destination promotion activities um, that we're looking to brouhaha over internally. So those are my two points. Thanks for uh, the time. This has been great. And thanks for the invitation, Patrick. Thank you, Anastasia, for that update. Are there any questions? I see. Jacqueline, how are things in Neil? Hi, thank you. Um, things in Neil are good. Um, so Ekdev just returned to the counter in May, so it's been. Jacqueline, I'm wondering. Just sorry to interject, but can't really hear. Um, yeah, you're transmitting, but there's no sound, both on mine and Patrick's. Try again. Yeah. Hold on, let me go over to the other mic here. Perfect. Yeah, if you just want to try. All right over here. Okay. And I guess Wendy cannot hear either here. Mm -hmm. 
while Jacqueline's trying to figure that out, I'm going to turn it over to um, Patrick for a quick update on your end, Pat. Hi, everybody. Um, OK, so um, a lot of uh, what my updates would be on are similar to what uh, Wendy was talking about. So we are going to definitely co-market the business survey once it's ready to go. Um, and then, yeah, we do um, we do have a list of small business week sessions uh, that we're we're hosting um, for community futures uh, on the infinite wc.ca website. You can just click on the small business week banner on the home page and that will take you to the page. Um, we're pretty we're pretty excited to have Todd Hirsch back. Um, I recently watched the last YouTube session we have on the WC channel uh, to see what he was saying about June and what the world looks like now, and it's, it was pretty accurate. So um, I'm pretty excited to see what he's going to say at uh, near the end of October about what's coming forward um, for the uh, end of the year into next year. Um, we do have two Grow with Google sessions that we'll be hosting as well as uh, Mark Shields from Business Link will be doing a session and we are co-promoting into that week for um, My Business Solutions on their second workshop in the uh, customer service um, theme. Uh, so we're excited to have that and that will be um, available online plus there is room available in uh, the Wheatland County office we are hosting um, at the same time. So uh, that's pretty exciting. Um, and if you visit our WC webpage, you'll notice that we have two um, themed documents for our Wheatland County community profile out now for uh, one for um, an overview of living in Wheatland County and um, uh, one for um, in, uh, investing in Wheatland County. And we'll have the overall community profile and another section coming out hopefully next week. Uh, so um, yeah, but to visit the site and take a look at those, um, we got a lot of data in there and a pretty good snapshot of the, the life and uh, um, potential of uh, starting a business in Wheatland. Um, yeah, so the um, yeah, what else are we working on? Um, yeah, it's 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 just uh, yeah, we're getting back into the infinite possibility sessions weekly, and um, so we're excited to see those come back, and and it's great to see all you guys back too. So uh, yeah, and um, I think that's what I got, Matt. Thanks, Pat. Any questions? As Pat was saying, the uh, community profile. Um, we brought that to council at our last council session and uh, very well done. A wealth of information, a couple of um, smaller uh, chapters that we kind of parse out of the gigantic community profile uh, to provide snapshots to professional uh, potential investors. So uh, very well done. Tons of information there. Uh, some really good uh, information on some of the history um, and the relationships uh, between um, various neighbors, Sik Sika, etc. So we're doing a lot of work to uh, um, really reach out and get some um, accurate uh, information and and working with our uh, neighbors to do so. So that was a really a job well done. Um, so have a look at that council agenda package uh, and we'll have some of those uh, documents uploaded shortly. Um, I'll turn it over to Jack Jacqueline. I wonder if you've unmute and try again. Not hearing uh, much. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Councillor Bigger. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I just uh, appreciate these WC infinite uh, conversations that we have. Thanks. And I just wanted to ask Patrick, did he say it's weekly or is it bi-weekly again? 
it's weekly. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I think today's uh, session with uh, Chris and Karen was amazing. I appreciate, uh, I know uh, Travel Alberta has uh, been helping Canadian Badlands out a lot in their wealth of knowledge. Um, I just think we all still need to keep working together to get get through this. And uh, I appreciate everybody that uh, takes the time to come on these calls. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. And I'll round up with uh, Reeve Link. And I will thank everybody for joining us today. That was an extremely informative session, and I think uh, really good. Hopefully, some other travel and tourism operators in the county and the region will access uh, this session after because I think there was just so much information packed into it. Uh, I want to thank our staff. The community profile that was referenced was a tremendous amount of work and is going to be a really valuable document um, for developers or people that are current business owners that might be looking to expand or uh, do different businesses in the county. It has uh, pretty much everything you would need to know about doing business in Wheatland County. So I'm grateful for the work that was put into that. And I'm grateful for the work that was put into this call. And I just want to thank everybody and invite you to join us again. Thank you, Reeve Link. If there are any questions uh, for the county. Thanks, Karen. She just logged off. Um, as Reeve Link mentioned, uh, hoping you can uh, join us next week, next Thursday, October the 1st. Mark Shields from Business Link is presenting on the importance of market research. Uh, so that'll be the uh, theme of next week's presenta uh, presentation and discussion. So hoping you can join us there. If there are no other comments, we will be signing off. We wish everyone a great weekend and week coming up. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Donna Bigger is now exiting. That was a good one. Yeah, I liked those two. That was really good. Yeah, definitely. I'll have to cut the end of this off. <laughs> I'm still hanging out. You guys did great. That was excellent. Thanks. Have a great afternoon, you guys. You too. Thanks. Uh...